The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 2300, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Oh, and if you do send in a question, we'll give you a copy of our Optimal Living Daily Workbook for free, even shipped to your door for free if you're in the U.S., you can email your question to health at oldpodcast.com. All right, and with that, let's get right to today's question as we optimize your life. Today's question came via email. Mary Ann writes, Hello, I've been on my health and fitness journey since early 2021, and I lost 60 pounds and have been able to keep them off for a while now. As far as I've come, I still would like to lose more fat, but I've been in this maintenance phase for so long now, I'm not sure if it's likely to happen or what I would need to do to restart the weight loss. How do you know when you've reached your body's preferred weight set point versus when you should keep pushing? Thanks so much for all you do and for the podcast. I love listening to it while taking walks. Thank you for taking the time to send in your question, Marianne. First, I can completely understand your frustration. Second, know that you're not alone. In my experience, having helped hundreds of individuals lose weight, seeing the results from their efforts can seem like that proverbial carrot dangling in front of them. It's close, but not within reach. So it's frustrating, especially when you've been doing everything right and your body simply isn't responding anymore. I want to congratulate you, though, on your progress so far. You've come a long way and that's not an easy feat. Now, Marianne, you mentioned this idea of a body weight set point. Let's start there. There's a theory with regards to weight management called the set point theory. It goes like this. Imagine your body has its own internal thermostat. Instead of this thermostat controlling body temperature, it controls body weight. Now, this body weight thermostat has a special built-in mechanism. Once you've set the thermostat to a certain body weight, you can never go back and set it for less than that. So, let's say a person's body has set a goal weight of 125 pounds. The set point theory would say that, okay, once you reach that body weight, you won't be able to move the thermostat setting any lower than 125 pounds. It can go up, but you can never go less than 125 pounds. So. Let's use that as the example. Then let's say this individual starts to lose weight. The set point theory would predict that the body would respond by saying, "Uh uh-oh, we can't set the body weight thermostat any lower. We're set at 125 pounds after all. So if they go under 125 pounds, that person's body will always try to fight to get back to 125 pounds because that's the body set point. Now, We must remember that this is just a theory. And in the words of the sometimes wiser than he knows, Joey Tribbiani from the television show Friends, whoa, whoa, that was just a theory. A lot of theories didn't pan out. Lone gunman, communism, geometry. Because here's what else happens when we lose weight. The body adjusts to this weight loss by slowing our metabolism down. Remember the word metabolism refers to the number of calories we burn in a day. A large portion of the calories we burn every day is due to keeping our organs functioning, us breathing, powering the brain, digesting and absorbing nutrients, and so on. So how is it possible that someone that carries more weight has a higher metabolism? Well, it's because when our bodies are forced to carry more weight, we burn more calories because of that. And here's what happens when our body weight plateaus. Our metabolism has gradually slowed down as the weight was coming off. So 
we might be following the same meal plan and exercise routine and nothing happens. If our metabolism has slowed down and yet we're consuming about the same number of calories and doing the same exercises, we will plateau. Still confused? I get it. I hope this demonstration helps. If you're not driving right now, do this with me. Raise your left arm above your head, kind of like you were doing a front shoulder raise. Now raise your right arm directly in front of you, but keep it at shoulder height. So your left arm should be higher than your right arm. Now, again, your left arm should be above your head and start to slowly lower that left arm while keeping your right arm still. The left arm represents your metabolism slowing as you lose weight. Your right arm, again, which shouldn't be moving, represents the diet and exercise routine you've been following. That's why the right arm is staying still. Eventually, as you continue lowering your left arm, it's going to line up with your right. That represents the moment where we plateau. So how do you break through the plateau? If I was successful with this demonstration, you actually already know the answer. You need to find ways to move your right arm. That means you have to change either your diet or your exercise routine or both. In my experience, individuals usually find it a bit nicer to modify their exercise routine. This is often because they feel very comfortable with the meal plan they've created. They've found their rhythm. Also, sometimes folks are following a low-calorie diet, so having them cut even more calories could be dangerous. So Marianne, this may mean you have to keep pushing. And by that, I mean we can look at mixing up your exercise routine. But even before we delve into the exercise side of things, here are some things to keep in mind. First, check with your healthcare provider to make sure that there isn't an underlying condition that may be preventing you from losing weight. Then, if you haven't started tracking your food intake, start. This should be the first step if you haven't begun doing this already. You can use good old-fashioned paper and pencil, or there are lots of free phone apps available to help you track. Every time you consume a meal, a snack, or even a drink, write it down. Write down the day and the time, what you ate or drank, and how much of it you consumed. Or, if you prefer to use a free phone app, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics likes the one called Chronometer, spelled C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. I've used it and have my students use it and it's very user-friendly. The reason this technique, this idea of tracking our food intake is so powerful because it first forces you to become aware of what you're eating and drinking as well as your portions. Second, by bringing you this awareness, it makes the eating behavior less automatic. You start to think about whether the food or drink is going to help you with your weight loss goals or not. And it's for these reasons researchers have repeatedly found that Simply tracking your food intake can help jumpstart weight loss again. If you're wondering, well, how many calories should I be eating each day? Most health professionals recommend we consume between 1,500 and 1,700 calories each day when we're trying to lose weight. Don't go below 1,500 calories each day because that could place unnecessary stress on the body. And as always, be sure your healthcare provider is aware of your diet and weight loss goals. Okay. Now let's talk exercise. The National Weight Control Registry has studied 60,000 people for over 10 years. All of these folks have lost at least 30 pounds and successfully kept it off. Want to know what they had in common? Exercise. But just saying exercise isn't enough. We need to be more specific about the types of exercises that will help trigger weight loss. Say walking for 30 minutes each day is your preferred method of cardio. To mix things up, consider adding in some resistance training. It could be bodyweight exercises, lifting actual dumbbells and barbells, using resistance bands, whatever suits you. Now, why would this help? Resistance training is one of the best ways to build muscle quickly. And muscle is active tissue and helps increase our metabolisms by burning calories for us. When it comes to cardio, change the intensity. If you normally walk for 30 minutes, jog instead. Now, I don't expect you to jog for 30 minutes straight right off the bat. Even if you end up jogging for only five or 10 minutes at a time, or even two minutes, and then walk the other 28 minutes, that's fine. Why would this help? By increasing the intensity, we burn more calories during that two, five, or 10 minute jog when compared to 
just walking. We're finding that by incorporating higher intensity activity like this, we not only burn more calories during the workout, but we find there's somewhat of an afterburn effect, which means the body continues to burn more calories after we finish the workout, which is a nice added bonus. All right, I wish you all the best, Marianne, as you smash through your weight loss plateau. And again, congratulations on your progress so far. The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. No matter what decisions you're dealing with, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with the right mindset and tools you need to thrive. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. And I really love the flexibility that comes with BetterHelp. The ability to message your therapist at any time goes a long way for making the therapy accessible and helping you feel like you're getting the assistance you need and when you need it. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash OHD today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash O-H-D. Thank you for taking the time to send in your question. Now, if you want to send me a question and have it answered right here on the show, you can email one to health at OLDpodcast dot com. If you do and you're in the United States, we'll mail you a copy of our hardcover workbook for free, as long as we have copies left. Again, just email your question to health at oldpodcast.com. All right, that's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through. I hope you have a great start to your weekend and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.